Science. Science. Story of a totem pole, take two. Okay, so we're talking about some weird stuff, time travel. We're talking about space. We're talking about black holes, white holes. Um, I wish in our conversation, I wish that Neil deGrasse Tyson was here. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson or like even Carl, what, what's his name? Carl Sagan? Yeah, Carl Sagan, Pale Blue Dot. Billions and billions of years ago. Uh, well, I mean, okay, and what was the comment you just made? About going through a black hole and we could end up on the other side of the white hole. Or what would happen if we found one of those white holes? Because we've never really found this supposed no, white but hole. Theoretically, but they have theoretically, to exist. Theoretically, they have to exist. And, and, and what I said to him was, and this was prior to... Um, prior to... Recording. Recording. We, we, I, I, missed the, uh, I missed the button. I should have hit the button earlier. As I said... That if there are black, since everything in the universe has not really an opposite, but you have matter, you have antimatter. So if you have a black hole, then you have a white hole. Or what if these white holes are on the other side of a black hole? So black hole sucks everything in, the white hole pushes everything out. So what happens though? Let, let's just say a planet gets sucked into a black hole, then would a planet get you know, sh shot off the other side, or would it get um, busted into, you know, a hundred pieces and then a hundred planets get pushed out? I mean, I don't know how that works. And, you know, we're talking about time travel, and I made the, uh, the statement that I don't think if time travel becomes possible, I don't see us being able to go back in the future. I only see us being able to go forward in the future and then possibly coming back to where we were at the exact point we left to go into the future. I don't think we can go back in history a second. I don't think we'll ever be able to do that. But also, it's the case of the only theory we know in the mo moment right now of how time travel would exist is wormholes. Right, that's what the theory is. What if in the future we find another theory being like, okay, we can probably do this to go back in time. But the question is, what would we have to open? What would we have to do to go back in time? Well, I don't, first of all, we need a flux capacitor. But um, <laughs> well, I don't. I just, I just don't think that the uh, you know our technology is going to allow us to do that. Though I just don't no. think going back in time I, because I think that time travel. I think you know if you believe in in aliens or if aliens have been to our planet, or if you've seen UFOs and you believe any of that, I think that it's really only possible to go through wormholes or to go or, or, to, or to time travel through them. Because I don't think that, uh, I, I just don't think that a spaceship or an armada of spaceships would be able to go through the universe and enter our solar system and approach our planet without us seeing them from a scientific point of view through telescopes or through things like that. So I, I don't think that, I think that they just kind of appear there because they're traveling through time. So we don't see them until boom, there they are. I mean, that that's, I, I mean, what, uh, what do you think? I mean, that would make sense because yeah, well, if they are coming to our planet, which to me it's a give or take sort of thing, I don't. I think they've seen our planet and said, "No, nah, we're not dealing with that." Um, but I do think that yeah, they would have to time travel in order to just appear just like that, because <clears throat> surely if they were coming to our planet, the big Telescope in like the 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 satellites and the big telescope in uh but what's what's that place? The, you know the the big telescope that the Hubble. Yeah, that um that would see it. That that would see ships coming into our to our planet. So they would have to time travel. That or aliens don't exist, which I don't believe in that. Well, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Aliens 
what would we what what is the definition of alien um well that's a good question i would say from a uh from a scientific point of view that an, an alien would be something of uh not of this earth that was born uh outside of uh the confines of our you know atmosphere um because you know you have illegal aliens which are from another country we're talking about aliens from another world well, so that's how i would i would define it not every alien is a humanoid think of it that way if it means they're not from this world bacteria on if there's bacteria on mars that's considered oh, alien. I, you're absolutely right now I, I mean i would i never if, if if i said something to make the assumption that we are talking about humanoids. No, no, then, I'm just, I'm just saying in general, because what when you think of aliens, what does everyone think of that long, long neck, long body with kind of diamond shaped head? Well, yeah, I mean, and that's not. And where that, you know what's funny is, okay, this goes back to the whole Area 51 thing and everything, and Roswell, and Roswell, and, and but if if. If, alien, if aliens didn't exist, okay, then why do we have so many diagrams of, of these creatures looking the same from people from all over the world that kind of all look the same? I mean, who thought of this concept? If, if they don't exist, who thought of this concept? So this is what I pictured an alien would be, in, and that got accepted around the world. So, you know, Roswell, um, Area 51, something happened. Yeah, I, I kind of do believe that there was a, an alien ship that landed there or crash landed there. I mean, yeah, it's out of every consp conspiracy that I believe in, every I believe aliens existing to be one hundred percent true. Because if you say aliens don't exist, then that's ignorant in thinking we're the only life forms. In the universe you're absolutely right i mean you are absolutely 100 percent correct it, it, it's ignorant thinking it's like, i mean it, I it's very ignorant thinking uh and i think that uh you know it's we can't be the only intelligent life i mean you know whether you believe in a a god or whatever you believe in then i mean whatever your faith is, you can't believe that in this whole vast universe that we are the only ones. Cause let, let me, let me go all pseudo sciencey here and put religion in it. Doesn't matter what your religion is, Christianity, pagan, doesn't matter. If we are the only intelligent life forms, if we're the only life forms at all in the universe, what's the point of having several different universes and planets and galaxies Instead of just well, hold on now, one. I got to say this: we don't have several universes. We have one universe. Well, we have a lot of different galaxies, and all these galaxies have a you know billions of stars. Yeah. Well, and all these stars probably have planets, you know, rotating around them or revolving or not revolving. Uh, yeah, revolving around yeah. them. And these planets have moons, and some moons have moons. So I, what? Well, yeah. It would. It would really. You know, when it's all said and done, and they came in and science said, you know what? Nope, there's no other life form. It's it's just us out here. I don't think I would accept that very well. Uh, one, I wouldn't accept it. Two, I'd be like, then what's the point of all these other planets and galaxies and solar systems? What's, what's the point? I mean, I'm, I'm still... I'm still uh, optimistic that they're going to find something on Mars to where they, they're going to find that, you know, we haven't traveled to the ice caps of Mars, so we don't know what's there. But I, I'm very, you know, because it shows that they had rivers and stuff like that because of trenches and things. I'm, I'm optimistic that they're going to find some type of a frozen microorganism that was in the ice cap or in the water that was on Mars at one time. Um, you know, because, hey, think about it. In another billion years, the Earth could be like Mars. I mean... At one time, my friend and I were just joking around and talking about... They, they thought of those, like, trenches that you find. It's like... Okay, think about... He, and he said this. Think about how we had the First World War on Earth. What was the big, major thing in the First World War? 
other than the advancement of technology. Trenches. Trench warfare was huge. Right. So what if those trenches we are seeing on Mars, there was actually a war there which wiped out all life forms. Well, that, I was like, you're getting a little bit science fiction there, but, you know, hey, it could happen. Well, I mean, it could happen, but I think if you, if you look at the trenches in World War II, they were built and designed. They were pretty symmetrical in, in, in the sense that, that the walls were, you know, straight. They yeah. went in straight things. You know, you didn't go like this around a bend. You went down and made a 90-degree bend or, or whichever direction you are going to go. So I don't think that... Rarely were there ever trenches that were made to where it goes at like a angle. The only trench I can think of that ever did that was on the Eastern Front. And it was near... Oh, what was it? Well, I it mean, was, we, we obviously weren't there. But every movie that I've ever seen that depicted World War One showed trenches yeah. built on angles. Which you would be correct, but there's one in the, in the Eastern Front, Russia. It was near, it was near, if you know, where the attack of the Denman happened. It was like 100 miles or 100 kilometers away to where it, ha it or, or at least it had an illusion of a curve. Maybe there wasn't an actual curve, but it had an illusion. Uh, what was the... Uh... Well, that, but that's... The point I'm making in all this is in... On Mars, they're... The trenches on Mars that they're saying were from water flowing, it, it's the same as our riverbeds and our yeah. rivers are. I mean, that that's why we think the way which, we do about that, because they're the same. Which you could say that's probably how our how Earth will be, you know, in a couple thousand years. Well, I don't. I mean, that's why I said a At million years, because I think the Earth will will, will last a thousand years. Um, I don't I mean longer than any country on this planet. I can tell you that. Well, yeah. I mean, think about what civilization has only been around for what a couple thousand years, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> and there's well, no... well, well, it's hard to say how long, you know, AD, uh, and yeah, I still use the term AD. I'm not into all the other stuff, you know, BC and AD. I still use all that. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to tell you something that's interesting. If the history of Earth was a clock and it had 12 hours, Dinosaurs would have been here at 11 o'clock. People would have been here two minutes to midnight. That's how, that's the history of the Earth, uh, according to scientists. That's how close we are to the dinosaurs. You know, and I mean, that's, uh, I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson that actually put it like that. Yeah. And that's one of those things you're like, hmm. That's very... But you'd think we're a lot older than the dinosaurs, but we're... Well, you would, you would think that, but, I mean, we're, we're not. Do you, do you believe those cave carvings? Well, I, when I say, hang on, when I say, man, I'm just talking about homeo safe. I mean, it could be cavemen or whatever. Yeah. But you, you... No, actually, that would have been like five minutes till midnight, but intelligent man, and I'm going to say from probably the, you know, in the the the... Starting in the, the hundreds, like the 13, 1400s, whatever, that's really when intelligent beings started to, you know, to show for whatever reason. But yeah, well, it's like, well, we had intelligent beings in like 800. And because, well, I mean, think about the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was only what? Well, it was around uh, around six hundred eighty. The Roman Empire, no. Well, no, it'd be BC. BC, yeah. Okay. I mean, it was you know because it was the Romans. That if you believe in the Bible, it was the Romans who, when they found out that that the Christ was born, it was the Romans who tried to seek him out and start killing all kids under two years old. You know, hoping that they that they killed him. 
And I mean, that was the Romans that did that. So the empire was, yeah, was before he was born. And then like a hundred or so years later, or a few hundred years later, then you got the Holy Roman Empire, which was neither holy nor Roman. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, that joke. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's so weird to sit and talk about things and pontificate that we'll never be able to answer. We'll never have the answers. You know, I mean, I wish, I really wish that people back then around the, you know, when BC became AD around that time, I wish that there were better records kept. But the problem is, is language wasn't a, a, <clears throat> It wasn't really a, a great thing back then. I mean, and also think of it this way. Most of the records that probably would have been back then were in the library of Alexandria. They got burned. And we all know what happened there. Right. Well, that's my point. I mean, think about this. Think about from, I would say, 1960 on, all the documents, all the records, all the space stuff. I mean, everything, a thousand years from now, it's still going to be around. They've done so much... Uh, to safeguard uh, the, the destroying of, of these documents. I mean, the hell, we still have the original Declaration of Independence and the original Constitution that was written back in the 1700s. You know what I mean? We still have those. And it's, it's like, even now with the age of the Internet, those things aren't going away. Right. I mean, you're right. They'll never go away. And... I mean, I don't know. It's just weird to think about. It, it's everything, everything that's happening now. Uh, and I, I dated. I said back to 1960. Well, we really didn't have the internet back then, but everything was documented to the case. And now it is on the internet. I mean, you know, 1969. Rockets launching, going to the moon, stuff like that. We have all that on, on videotape that's archived. And it's going to be around for as long as mankind is in existence. Um, you know, the, the, yeah, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, they're on display at the Library of Congress, but they're safeguarded from you know, being uh, desecrated. Stolen, desecrated. Stolen, destroyed. I mean, you know... Yeah, you watched the movie uh, National Treasure. Yeah, he stole the Declaration of Independence. But do you think that could really happen? No. Mm -mm. I mean, there's no, there, there, no, there's no way it could happen. Here's how, here's how much it wouldn't be able to happen. Let's just say it was, it, it, let's just say, like, it, it was starting to get safeguarded back when it was first written. Even the people who wrote it Let's just say they were trying to steal it, would not be able to steal it. That that's that's how guarded this fucking place is. Well, I think when you talk about the Declaration of Independence, it is so safeguarded. But I mean, there were many copies that were originally written. Oh yeah. I mean, there there were there were. A lot, I mean, each state had their own copy, if I recall correctly. I may be wrong, but there's really only one that's that's left. And it's, yeah, you know, you can see pictures of it on the internet and it's faded and it's, you know, it looks like something that's uh, 250 years old. I mean, <laughs> it, it, because it is. Um, but if somebody stole the Declaration of Independence, you look at the movie National Treasure. I, I love the movie, both it, that one it, and the Book of Secrets. It's but, amazing. But. <laughs> but I don't, I can't see somebody putting lemon juice on the back of it to see if there's a cipher or hidden code written there. I mean, you stand a chance. Would you want to be the one responsible for, A, stealing the Declaration of Independence, and B, destroying the Declaration of Independence? But, if, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. It was either the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. One of those, one of those copies was found, like, I don't want to say yard sale, but it was inside of a picture frame. That somebody found and wanted to change the picture, and they found one of the copies. I can't remember which one it was, but uh, apparently, yeah. and you know, it's now in the Library of Congress. But, um, yeah, I, I like those movies. Yeah, they're kind of a a fantasy type thing, but 
Yeah, it's just and we I talked s- about time travel, just like the uh, Back to the Future movies. I, I enjoy those because they did such a good job from movie to even it within its own movie, keeping the timeline perfect. You know, um, and it's just. I don't know. Apparently, they're making a four. I heard that. Uh... Um, yeah, and and uh, you know, Michael J. Fox is in it as Marty, but he doesn't play the main character. It's just like a cameo role. Um, but you know, just little things like in the schools, looking at the time on the clocks, and just I mean, it was just so they they did that movie just so perfectly. So perfect. I, I, I you know I, I will be. It'll be really interesting to watch the new movie and to see if they, you know, kept it kind of the same. I mean, I don't even know what the uh, what the premise would be, but I know that, like the after the first movie, um, his girlfriend got played by Elizabeth Shue, and I can't remember the girl's name in the first movie, but apparently those two end up meeting. The two different ones end up meeting. Um, yeah, I, I watched a, um, I, uh, I watched the trailer for it and I, I didn't quite understand what the movie's about. I don't, I don't. Okay. Okay. The third movie, not my favorite. No, no. But where are you going to go from where that, you can't really go anywhere from the third movie. Well, you, you kind of can't, but you know, I mean, I didn't. It, it was my least favorite. I mean, one, two, and three are the order of that I rank, ranked them in. Um, because, I mean, personally, I'm not crazy about, you know, Biff being an asshole. You know, <laughs> I mean, really. And that's, I mean, well, even I, though he was. He was. He turned he, into a bigger one after he, he won the, you know, became rich and everything. But which I don't, would make sense, but, you know. I mean, I don't know. Because I think that, you know, the first one. They were in the past, in the 50s, right? The second one, they were in the future. I remember posting a meme saying, you know, when it was like, what, 2016 or 15 or whatever it was, say, hey, look, in 10 minutes, we got to start dressing like this. Um, but, and then the third one, they went back to the Old West. So maybe, I mean, I, I could see doing a, a future future to where they're, you know, it's kind of the space age and everything. I, I like might habitat on the moon, or you know. Even though I like, I like the history of the old west. I don't. I I just couldn't get into the third movie. It was just not. It just didn't seem like Back to the Future. If that makes no, sense. No, it was slow. I mean, it was slow because really, when you think about it, the third one was was more of a love story of Doc and. uh uh, I can't remember her name, um, but, the, but the old writer who, who he, uh, I, can't, I can't remember her name. She's uh, a real historian. Yeah, Claire. She's a real histori- historian, a uh, history figure, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. No, nah, I don't know. It was all fictitious, man. I'm, I, f- I mean, it was I'm all fictitious. I, I, don't, I don't, I didn't recognize one name anybody said that would yeah, I mean, just like any of the movies, think about it. I mean, it's not like a uh, a Forrest Gump where he experienced things that actually happened. I think everything in the movies was fictitious. I mean, I can't think of anything that would was be... It, but, but, but wasn't there something in one of the movies where... No, I'm probably thinking of a different movie. I, I, I'm probably thinking of a different show or movie. Because I was like, isn't there one where you you see a president walking down the street, like not walking down the street, but in like a carpool? But then I'm like, wait, that's a different show entirely. Yeah, I don't know. Um... I, I, I'm thinking of one. I remember the scene in. I could have been Forrest Gump, actually. I well, think... No, no, it wasn't. And here's why I say that. It had Teddy Roosevelt. I remember this. Clip. Teddy Roosevelt. It had it had it had Roosevelt. He was like walking down the street, waving at everyone. It was almost like a parade, but you know, since he couldn't have. I mean, I, I remember, remember seeing him in, in the the musical Newsies 
he was in his car and he was tipping his hat and waving everybody. Yeah, I, I don't think. <sighs> but I, I don't know of a movie where that happened. Technically, the Newsies is a movie, but um, um, didn't like the musical though. The actual Broadway musical of Newsies nope, didn't like. Nope, it. nope, nope. They nope, changed nope, nope. everything way too much. Way the much. songs were different. The uh, the guy who played Denton, the <laughs> reporter, was a girl. And I guess her and Jack fell in love or something. Instead of him falling in love with uh, Sarah, you know, the sister of uh, yeah, David and uh, what was his brother's name? David and uh, I can't remember. I haven't seen the new season in forever. I can't remember. But I mean, I, they just changed everything around. I didn't like it. I didn't like how the set was with all the squares. It looked like Hollywood squares. Didn't I didn't care for it at all, man. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'll, uh, you know, I'll give a review or something when uh, Back to the Future 4, I guess if that's what they're calling it, uh, comes out, when it comes out. But, I mean, I don't want to get too excited for it because, you know, I have a problem with movies that, are critically acclaimed and everybody says it's the greatest thing on earth and blah, blah, blah. I just, I guess my expectation is too high. I'm going to give you case in point, Saving Private Ryan. Everybody talked about how good that movie was and everything like that. I didn't care for it. It, it was mediocre at best. I mean, it was slow. You know, they didn't discuss things they should discuss. Like, you know, why did uh, Tom Hanks' uh, character, why did he have the shakes? Well, that's, that's, that was a, they didn't explain that, but that was a, that was a huge, that's actually historically accurate. That was a huge thing that, uh, soldiers of, because obviously Saving Private Ryan would happen during Normandy and then the days prior to it, that happened to a lot of soldiers that were fighting on the beach of Normandy. They were shaking on both sides. Well, yeah, but his character was so calm, cool, and collected about everything but he'd look at his compass and look at a piece of paper and his hand's shaking. That, that's, you know, I mean... I mean, that doesn't really need to be explained if you know the history of well, World I, War II. I th but here, here's the difference, though. A lot of the people you're talking about were kids who got over on the beach of Normandy and every other person was given a gun and every other person was given ammo. So this person with ammo would follow this person with a gun until he got killed and he'd take the gun. Then he had a gun and ammo. I mean... You know, you're taking kids, and they didn't even really have boot camp and stuff like that as much well, back I don't, then. That didn't really happen during the beaches of Normandy. What you're thinking of is the myth of the Soviet Union. No, that's not what I'm thinking about. Because that's the exact same thing people say about the Soviet Union. One one comrade gets gets ammo, one comrade gets gun. Mm -hmm. Comrade with gun dies, comrade with ammo, pick up gun. No, I'm, I'm talking about this is, I mean, if you research it, this is, that's what happened. Um, but they took kids, you know, boot camps normally six to eight weeks for whatever branch of military service. They took kids that were, you know, turned 18. They drafted them, took some of them out of high school, sent them overseas, put a gun in their hand, no instructions, not knowing what to do. You know, listen to the person in charge. Didn't tell them who it was. They didn't know. They had to figure out who was in charge. I mean, it's crazy. Usually the person who's in charge is the one who's talking a lot. So... Well, so they figured they probably figured that out real quickly. You know, it's kind of like uh, what movie? Uh, well, yeah, Forrest Gump actually. When uh, Lieutenant Dan said, "You know, don't salute me," you know, because that's a dead giveaway. If anybody's watching them, you salute somebody. That means they're superior in rank, and that's some who they want to take out. You know, and it's it's I don't know. It just I, it had to be a hard time for people who went, and I I, I kind of regret. That when your great grandfather was in his right mind, that I didn't sit and listen to the stories he told about uh, World War II and Korea, because he was in both of them. I mean, yeah. he was in the front lines fighting in both of them. And every once in a while, he'd talk about it, but for the most part, he didn't like to talk about what went on. You know, but of course, he was the same type of person that said that you know PTSD doesn't exist. These people came back; they were. Yeah, PTSD, shell shock, it wasn't a real thing because he didn't experience it. He was able to suppress it. I think everybody came back 
What, you know what I mean? Because that has to mess with your mind. If you're out there and just killing people and seeing people get killed, it has to mess with your mind. I mean, there, it, it just if you're a normal person, it has to. And if it doesn't mess with your mind, then I don't think you're normal. <laughs> you know, like, you can even, like, with people where they're, like, even people who are like, I don't think that would mess with my mind. I'm like, you, you say that. But then you, you, I, I'd suggest you go and experience that if you think that. Yep, I agree. Like even even my thing, I'm like, I don't think that would affect me. I don't think it would. But now I'm, I'm thinking, seeing it on a t, seeing it you know, on a TV show, movie, game, is obviously much different. That's why. Here's the thing about VR. Which, which why VR is so fucking scary. There are games that they people have made with World War Two in VR, and one of my friends played it. His hands were shaking after playing it. I'm like, yeah, that's more that's more real because you're not looking at a screen. You're actually looking almost as if you're actually looking into the eyes of your character rather than looking at a screen through the eyes of your character. Yeah, I've never I don't think I've ever looked at VR. I, I have. I, I can actually see in VR too, like, which is weird. Well, but it, the point I'm making is this, is you know, if you look at games like the America's Army, that game came out and it was a training aid for soldiers. I remember playing it. I mean, I was pretty decent. I think yeah. I got to like an 85 <laughs> level. Hundreds of highest you can get. And I think I was at 85. Um, but I don't... To me, there was nothing in it that, that said, okay, this is, this is real. I mean, nothing about it was real. You know what I mean? You're, you're in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and you start shooting at somebody, and they start bunny hopping. I mean, how real is that? Well, well, then that's when America's Army 3 came out and, you know. Right, but I mean, you couldn't, I, it's like you couldn't climb over a wall. You could go up ladders and stairs, but you couldn't climb a wall. You couldn't, you know, do anything. And then, I mean, you know, when you threw a grenade and the guy would scream frag out or, or the, you know, what you heard in a foreign voice, you don't say that every time you throw a grenade because you don't want people to know it's coming. Right? Exactly. I mean, I don't know. I enjoyed the game though, I will say that. It's a it's a pretty good game. I uh play I played the uh third game when it was still in beta. Well I mean to play it now I'd have to get a graphics card. And I played uh Proving Grounds when it was in beta and it's pretty good. It's not as I'd say it's not as good as the first, as, as the second one and third one, but still pretty good. Yeah, I don't even know if this computer, if I'd be able to put a graphics card in it. You might. Well, I think it'd be too tall. Because this is a slim case. It is a slim, you might need to get a different case if you want to put a graphics I mean, I'd, card. I'd have to get a different tower. Yeah. And if but, you're going to get a different tower, tower for gaming, why not go for a big, huge one? <laughs> Too bad. You could just swap out graphics cards. I mean, everything in here, though, I'd switch out because it runs perfect. You know, I've got the yeah. RAM. I've got 32 uh, gigs of RAM. Or oh, shit. I've got uh, probably, what, three and a half terabytes of uh, hard drive space. So, yeah. I, I mean, I've upgraded this one pretty good for relatively cheap. Except you playing a game with me. That would be funny to... Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do it with my hand. That would be pretty funny but, to watch. Well, we're going to close this out. We've been on for about 35 minutes now, and... Uh, yeah, you know, this is Penguin Speaks along with Sigma. Sigma, and we are, uh, we are, uh, what are we? What are we? <laughs> Story of a <laughs> Totem Pole. <laughs> uh, look for more uh, videos to come, and uh, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when we're posting videos. But until next time, be somebody important. Be yourself. Peace out.